Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today we are going to do the first part in our You Get So Alone at Times It Just Makes Sense series in the Bukowski Book Club. Now, this has been a long time coming because I don't know if you realize this, but a lot of the Bukowski database that was up on Bukowski.net was taken down. And that included the timeline, which I have been using a lot on these videos. So um, I had to find a link on a forum to the Wayback Machine to be able to get this. And I don't know if it's going to be exactly the same. I think it is, but it might be a little fucked up. So, um, there's not a whole lot of time in between War All the Time and this one. So, this, this part won't take long. But we are going to do a little something different as well. So, we'll get to that in a second here. Okay, so we're in, 19, we're in 1985, okay? Um, and I'm going to read a lot of this since it's going to be too small for you to see here. Okay. So, in 1985, um, on March 20th, Bukowski proposes to Linda Lee Bailey, um, marries Linda Lee at the Philosophical Research Society's Church of the People in, Los, in the Los Feliz area of Los Angeles. That's also where that place I go to called Home is, where those Bacon Bloody Marys are. They're fucking off the chain. Um... The ceremony is officiated by legendary kook, or occult scholar, depending on your point of view, Manly P. Hall. So, um, now all of the links to the stuff in here are not clickable, because the website that this originally came from is down. So that kind of sucks. But in 1985, um, Alone in a Time of Armies was the Black Sparrow New Year's greeting. A book called Cornered, 30 copies were published by Martin under the fictitious Burn Again Press imprint in October. And then Good Stuff was the Wormwood Review at number 100 center section. So it was a uh, chapbook of Bukowski stuff in the center section of that. That came out in the winter um, Barbet Schroeder, Schroeder's short film interviews and readings video releases the Charles Bukowski tapes. I don't like how that was written, but um, that's on VHS um, in 1987 and DVD in 2006. The LP Hostage source is a 1980 reading. Um, that one... Trying to remember which one that was. We've talked about it in the past. It's it's gone it's gone by a different name. I'm wondering if that's the one in Hamburg. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Anyway. So a cassette release called Cassette Gazette Poems. Source is a 1970 home reading. And I think that has a lot of the 70 minutes in hell stuff. I'm pretty sure. Um, not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. And I think that was put out by um, a Louisiana um, free press magazine. Um, uh I can't remember the name of it, but I'm pretty sure that's who put that one out. Um, also in 1985, this is something that was terrifying me at a young age. Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, who murdered more than a dozen people in Los Angeles over the summer, is captured and severely beaten by an East L.A. mob before being turned over to the police. And my friend's dad was in that mob, by the way. So that's interesting. That was a fun thing. 
So now let's jump over to 1986. Um, In a January 8th letter, Bukowski says, My home life has developed into into nightmare proportions. I'm unable to write about this portion of my life now and may never be able to. But if I ever get the space to, I've got a novel that will make post office factotum and ham on rye look like kindergarten stuff. Some people seem to envision me floating in an easy dream world now, if they only knew. I think I know what you mean. Um, Yeah, I'm trying to think. I mean, there are many poems about his relationship once the marriage happened. But I would be interested. I mean, obviously that's something we'll never see, but that would be really interesting to look at. And then honestly, if Linda Lee is still in charge of all of his stuff, like she'll never let that shit out. So there's that. Um, Gold in your eye. Black Sparrow New Year's greeting. The wedding. Black Sparrow limited edition 40 copies. I wonder if that was just photos and stuff from the wedding Um, that came out in january and then the day it snowed in la came out in september you get so alone at times it just makes sense came out on september 26th and then the chapbook relentless as the tarantula came out so another busy year for him um an interview reading um release called do you use a notebook from movable feast number three cassette 1986 the transcript of that i think is in another book i'm pretty sure i don't know what it is off the top of my head but um that i'm really sure the transcript from that is in a book um, his P.O. box in 1986 was 132 San Pedro, 90731. He set that up in March. Um, and then also going on in 1986, the Central LA or the Central Library in downtown Los Angeles burns in an arson fire. It remains closed until 1993. I remember that. Hands Across America attempts to form a human chain of more than 5 million people stretching 4,150 miles from Long Beach to New York City. I remember that. Um, A four-seat Piper airline collides with a DC-9 while descending into LAX. The planes both fall in Cerritos, killing all 67 on both aircraft and another 15 on the ground. I totally remember that. Um, there was something at my school, like we had to, we stopped school because of that. And we were close, but we weren't that close. But I remember that happening. Wow. I'm going to start remembering all sorts of shit that happened here. So whatever. So that's what's going on. We are now up to speed with Bukowski's life. Um, let's see what else there is to see oh i'm back um it has been a day since i recorded that first part (laughs) it is the morning that i'm gonna put this video up okay i just have to do a couple things i gotta make a little thumbnail and um all that shit but and edit this of course um but what i did was last night i watched back um a video and I guess I'll put it up here and it is um, the review of you get so alone at times it just makes sense that I did like two years ago I want to say and um, in that video I even said I've already reviewed this book on this channel so that was probably from uh, that would have been maybe like three or four years before that. I don't know how long I've had this channel now that I'm thinking about it, whatever. What I'm getting at is 
is that I probably read um, this collection more than any other Bukowski poetry collection. I will tell you, when I got this book, I remember... I go and see if you could tell, kind of, can't you? If you can tell, like, there's a lot of notes, like, right down here, like, in the beginning of the book, and then there's, like, this period of nothing, and then some more notes. I remember I, like, burned through the first half of this book the first time I read it, and I was kind of blown away. And then I was kind of annoyed through the middle, and it took me a really long time to get through the middle of this book. Not that there was anything wrong with it. It just wasn't as good as what had already happened. Um, and then once I got into it again, it picked up steam and I went through it. Probably another critique of this book that I have. When you first read Bukowski being successful, okay, it is kind of jarring because it comes off as very braggy and um, liking the smell of his own farts and the whole fucking thing. But as you go through like the rest of the books and stuff, you realize like, fuck yeah, like you might as well fucking brag. Like you had nothing for so long. And um, so it's like if you just know Bukowski based off of the like hard drinking, like party time, broke ass motherfucker, there's probably going to be some stuff in this book, just like there was some stuff in War All the Time, but there's probably going to be some stuff in here that um, doesn't make you jump for joy but I would say give it a chance get through it and see how you feel about it as a whole when you're done the other thing I was going to say about this is that video I did a couple years ago it is hardly a book review as much as it is a a look back on the body of Bukowski's poetry like, using this as kind of like the fulcrum, like, going in and out. So, again, if that's interesting, which, if you give a shit about this at all, you would find that one interesting, too. So, if you haven't seen it, go check that one out. One more thing here. This book, I believe, is the first collection of Bukowski's poetry that was technically new and did not appear anywhere else. And the reason why I say that is that on the index or on the copyright page, it does not thank any other editors or publishers or anything like that. And this is the first time that that's happened. So technically, this is his first collection of new poetry, I think. Bukowski Book Club in full effect. Um, I think what we're going to do... I think what we're gonna do, folks. Yes, this is to this is for Jeff Copeland. I don't know who Jeff Copeland is. Yeah, we're gonna do this even crazier because that last one ends on. Oh, that's on three twelve. All right, so um, we are going to read. the The first part of this will be from the beginning to page one twelve. Um, so the poems will be. 1813 through 1883 all the way to the last shot and then the next week we'll do whorehouse on page 113 up into everybody talks too much on page 212 because you talk too much you never shut up I said you talk too much Homeboy, you never shut up. And then um, we'll do Me and My Buddy to It's Ours. And that will be how we're going to do this. Okay, We're going to 
this video is on the main feed, then um, all of the subsequent uh, reviews of each section will be for members at the starting tier and up, okay? And so every week we will do this between now and then. I know on the last one, it got all over the place. So we're going to try to really um, pick up the pace with this guy. Um, and then after this book, in case you're curious, we have, um, ooh, so that'd be kind of cool. So after this one, we're doing the Rooming House Madrigals, which were his early poems from 46 to 66. So that's going to be kind of like a fun little jumping back around thing. And a lot of those poems are going to be super fucking familiar to you guys if you were watching the Bukowski chapbook videos. Okay? So anyway, um, you get so alone at times, it just makes sense. Charles Bukowski, probably my favorite um, book of Bukowski's poetry. And with that said, it's probably one of my favorite books of poetry. So there you go. If you ever wanted to read poetry and you think anything I say is worth anything... Pick this book up, okay? So, let's have art, everybody. Keep buying my books. Buy that book, too. And I'll talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.